Hi, welcome to Mrs. Lee's Chemistry Academy, where no students are left behind. Today, we are going to explore the concept of empirical formula. This is tied to the learning objective 1.2 from College Board, that the students are able to select and apply mathematical routines to mass data to identify or infer the composition of a pure substance and or mixtures. So what is empirical formula? It is the smallest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. Then the molecular formula, how is it different from an empirical formula? It represents the final true formula of the compound, and it could be a number of multiples of the empirical formula. How do we go about doing this? First, we obtain mass data of the elements or compound and convert it into moles. Then we compare the moles of the elements to obtain simple whole number ratios. And if necessary, we may need to multiply it by an integer to convert into whole number ratios. Now we have the empirical formula, and if we know the molar mass of the compound, we can compare the molar mass to the empirical mass to find the integer n and then we multiply it into the empirical formula to find the molecular formula. All right, here's the problem uh, about vanillin, the major component of vanilla bean. It is an organic compound made up of elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. When 2.10 grams of the substance is completely burned, 4.86 grams of carbon dioxide and 0.995 grams of water are obtained. Use the data to find empirical formula of vanillin. Given the molar mass is 152.15 grams per mole, find the molecular formula of vanillin. Finally, write a balanced chemical equation to show the combustion reaction. So we did 4.86 grams of carbon dioxide First, convert it into moles of carbon dioxide, dividing it by the molar mass, 44.01 gram. Now, because in one mole of carbon dioxide it contains one mole of carbon, now we have obtained 0.110 mole of carbon. And converting it into grams of carbon, 1.33 grams. Taking the 0.995 grams of water, we convert it into moles of water, dividing it by the molar mass of 18.02 grams. And because in one mole of water it contains two moles of hydrogen, we multiply it by mole ratio of 2 to 1, and we obtain 0 0.110 moles of hydrogen, and convert it into 0 0.111 grams of hydrogen. Now to find the mass of oxygen, we take the mass of carbon and the mass of hydrogen and subtract that from the mass of sample. And now we have the mass of oxygen converted into 0.0413 moles of oxygen. Now we have the three moles, the three different moles of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. If we divide it by the smallest uh, mole number of the three, which is 0 0.0413, we obtain some kind of mole ratio, which are not whole numbers. And then we want to convert into whole number ratio, you multiply that by three. Now we have 8 moles of carbon to 8 moles of hydrogen to 3 moles of oxygen. And the empirical formula is C8H8O3. Now we're going to compare the molar mass to the empirical mass, which both of them are 152.15 grams, so the ratio is 1. That means the empirical formula is the same as the molecular formula. Now we can use that to write the balanced equation in which two moles of vanillin combined with 17 moles of oxygen to yield 16 moles of carbon dioxide and 8 moles of water. In problem number two, a hydrate formula problem. We want to find the formula of the sodium carbonate hydrate. As you know, hydrate are compounds that are attached to X moles of water molecules and we obtain the following data. First, we take the empty evaporating dish and mass it on the balance, turns out to be 20.477 grams. 
Then we added a little bit of hydrate sample to it and mass it again. Now it weighs 23.035 grams. Now we take the evaporating dish with the hydrate sample and heat it on the um, hot plate to evaporate off the water. And we heat it three times. We cool it and we mass it until we get to 21.425 grams. That shows that the, the mass is gone, coming to be quite constant. That means probably all of the water has been driven off. Now then why do we need to heat it three times? Like I said earlier, we want to be sure that all of the water has evaporated and we are only left with the anhydrous sodium carbonate to obtain accurate calculations. To find the formula of the hydrate sample, first we need to know the mass of the anhydrous sodium carbonate. So we take the empty evaporating dish and subtract that from the final massing, that's the dish with the anhydrous sample, we get 0.948 grams. Now to find the mass of water, we take the dish with the anhydrous sample, subtract it from the dish with the hydrate sample, we obtain 1.61 grams. Now we're going to turn them into moles, and then we obtain a mole ratio between the two, and we obtain a mole ratio of 1 to 10, which means the hydrate formula is sodium carbonate dot 10 water. Uh, let's find an error that we could have done wrong, and that would yield a smaller mole ratio of water. Now, if we did not heat the hydrate sample sufficiently to drive off all the water, then the mass of the anhydrous would appear to be greater. And by subtraction, we would get a smaller mass of water calculated, and therefore the mole ratio of water will decrease and will be a smaller number. Another error which we could have done is that if we were not careful, after we mass the hydrate, we transfer it to the evaporating dish and we lost a little bit of that without even knowing it. Well then, when we mass the final anhydrous sample, it would weigh less than it's supposed to be. And by subtraction, we would, thought that, uh, we would think that the, um, the, the mass of water would have been uh, greater and that would give me a larger mole of uh, water in the hydrate. So to, let's summarize what we have learned today. One, we have learned how to apply mathematical routines to mass data to arrive at empirical formula and molecular formula of a compound. Secondly, we talk about how to perform an experiment to find the formula of a hydrate and to use the mass data to calculate the formula of a hydrate. And finally, we, finally, we analyze the errors to find out what kind of error could give us either a larger or smaller mole ratio of water in the formula. I hope that you have found the above lesson helpful and I hope to see you next time again. And please be sure to leave comments. Uh, so any kind of comment from you will be invaluable to us. Thank you.